What's up guys, it's Cobra from codingwithcobra.com and I've been meaning to bring this video to you guys for quite a bit now. I've got a few recommendations to make it, but what we're going to be doing in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to fetch and display data from a remote JSON API, I guess a, a RESTful API. So I'm going to show you what we're going to make. Basically, it's just a very simple crypto app where we're just downloading this data. We have an image here. Uh, we're using SD web image to download and cache the images. We're using URL session, all of that to get all these cryptos. And you can click into it. it just shows you some very basic data. Uh, I've made it so it's in a scroll view. I, this is just like maybe you'd have a description that'd be a bit longer, but I didn't want to pull that. So. Um, we also have a search bar up here so we can search Bitcoin. There's multiple different Bitcoins apparently. We can search Monero. Yeah, so pretty basic. In this video, I'm just going to go over what API we're going to be using. And we're just going to do basic project setup. And by the way, we're going to be using programmatic UI. So no storyboards. We're going to use MVVM. But one thing with the networking code, we're not going to be using like generic calls. So generic service calls. Um, I'll explain that later, but I'm going to have a video coming out about like generic API calls and all that. So one thing, click the little icon thing that's going to appear in the top right. Make sure that you watch this from a uh, playlist. Besides that, I'm planning on coming out with a paid networking course, so uh, network calls. So like I'd have like uh, different short videos for like, for example, like URL parameters for get request, post request, so that everything is in a nice like clean uh, one area that you can refer to. So check that out. I think it'd be helpful for myself and anyone else, hopefully. Um, so yeah, besides that, let's get started. Okay, so come to coinmarketcap.com slash API. You can Google it, and you're going to want to click up here for login. And it'll probably, there'll be create account or get your API key now. That works as well. And you're going to create your account, and then you're going to get this API key here, which I'm going to change this, so don't use this. But yeah, basically this is coin market cap. It's not the best crypto one because it has limits and stuff like that. But I wanted to show you guys how to use like an API key and all that. Um, so yeah, so you can make 333 calls per day, but that's a soft limit and you can make 10,000 per month. So basically you can make more than 300 a day but if you go over 10,000 a month, it'll cut you off. So come to this website and make your API key and I'll go over the rest of the documentation after. So we're gonna create a new Xcode project. So let me pull this up. Okay, so iOS app. We're just gonna call this iCrypt Pro. Make it a cool name. Um, we're gonna use storyboard language Swift. We don't need tests or core data. So next, we're gonna change uh, deployment version to 13.0. We're going to go into info. We're going to delete right here where it says main storyboard file base name. Um, the value is main, delete that. Open up this application scene manifest. What we're doing is we're making it so we don't use storyboards. We're gonna delete this one that says storyboard name, uh, main, delete that. Go under project, click on your project here and change this iOS deployment target to 13.0. We're going to set uh, up here, we're gonna set our simulator. I'm gonna go iPhone 11, 13.0. We're gonna go into scene delegate and we're gonna delete this code here in this first function. And I have uh, autocomplete, so check out my code snippets video and you can make um, your autocomplete for this. And we're gonna delete all of these functions because we don't need them. I'll pause for a sec so you can copy this. So we're going to make a few folders. We're gonna need a few. So you can click Command Option N to quickly make a new folder. We're gonna make one called Supporting. We're gonna make one called Controllers. 
another called view models, another called views, another called models, and one last one called API. So we're gonna move the app and scene delegate into the supporting. We're going to delete the main storyboard. Move to trash. We're going to move the assets and launch screen into supporting. And then we're gonna move the view controller into controllers. So now we're gonna go into our view controller and we're gonna, in the view did load, we're gonna say self.view dot background color equals dot system blue. And if we run that and the background is blue, then our programmatic UI is working. All right, cool, and that's working. So in supporting, we're gonna make a new file, gonna be a Swift file, and we're gonna call it constants, okay? So we're gonna make a struct constants. We're gonna go back to that uh, coin market cap account, and we're just gonna copy our API key. And we're gonna come in here, we're gonna say static let API underscore key equals, and paste that in, and this needs to be capital. Okay, so we got our API key there. Um, I'm also, we're gonna put the URL stuff. So this is gonna be used later for the API call. So I'm just gonna say mark API, I'm gonna say static let scheme equals HTTPS. We're gonna say static let base URL equals, I'm gonna copy this in so I don't mess this up. And it's pro-api.coinmarketcap.com. I'm also gonna say static let port colon int question mark, optional int equals nil. I'm also gonna paste in a full URL. We're not gonna use the port or full URL here, but um, usually I'll use URL components instead of just like a straight string. So you construct the uh, URL. And it's helpful if you're working on your own uh, local API on local host. So besides that, that's all we need to do for now. So I'm just gonna go over the API documentation quickly. So if you come back to this uh, coin market cap slash API, you can click on API documentation and you can read through um, all of this. Hopefully if you're using a different API in the future, they have good documentation like this one does, but I'm gonna try to go through like a high level overview of how you would read documentation. I mean, this is pretty good. It's pretty self-explanatory, but you have like authentication here. So you probably wanna read the quick start guide. Um, this is just talking about your keys and stuff like that, creating an account. But you have using your key, and as you can see here, preferred method via custom header. So x-cmc, so they have their own custom header name. And I'll go over HTTP headers in a little bit, but it's basically just what you send with your post or get request. So you'd have like a header like content type application JSON, which would be what, uh, I think it's what you'd prefer to return or send or whatever. You have your API key and there's different ways of authenticating with APIs. Depends, sometimes you'll have like a bear token, which is a, I forget what they call it, JSON web token. But anyways, so you just read through these. Now you have different endpoints and these endpoints are what you hit to get different data. So for example, we have cryptocurrency, endpoints that return data around cryptocurrencies such as ordered cryptocurrency lists or price and volume data. And then you have like exchange, so returns data um, around cryptocurrency exchanges such as ordered lists. So depending if you're using a different API, you just have to look at this and figure out what you want. We want the cryptocurrency, and then here we have even different endpoints for the cryptocurrency. So for example, you have map, which is kind of like a map or a list of all the cryptocurrencies that they have on the CoinMarketCap API. We're gonna skip all that, and the one that we want, let me get back there, is V1 cryptocurrency listing slash latest. 
So this one's gonna give us all the data that we really need. So, so as you can see, it'll return like an ID, a name, um, the rank, the coin market cap rank, and pricing data. So under here, under quote, you have all this different data and we'll go more into this later. But um, yeah, so you can just read things. So you can sort against different things. So we're gonna be sorting by market cap, which is just basically um, the crypto with the most money invested in it, I believe. And um, you can sort by name. So A to Z, symbol, uh, date, date added, <clears throat> and different things. So one other thing to note here is you have parameters. So this is where you would, where do we got the sort options? So down here you have sort. So these are different parameters that you would send with your API request um, for like how to sort it, for what different info you want. So down here, AUX, not sure what that stands for, but it has different things like, so do you want the, uh, the coin mark cap rank, the date added, the total supply quote and stuff like that. So I'll pull open Postman here. Now Postman's an application that you can use to uh, test out APIs. So if you look here, we can just send, instead of coding up everything, we can just use Postman. So I would highly recommend downloading this. And as you can see here, we have a get request to this. This is actually the map endpoint. But as you can see here, we have our parameters. So hopefully you can see this. And I made it bigger. But as you can see here, so we have, this is the base URL. Well, this is the base URL right here. And then you have the path. Um, so yeah, that's what we call this, the path. So V1 cryptocurrency map. And that's what these different endpoints are. So for example, here, you'll have this. So this is an endpoint. And then after this little question mark, as you can see, we have sort equals CMC rank. So that's a parameter. So you'll see after the question mark in a URL, that's the parameter. And this is just like different settings that you want, how you want to sort and other things, your data. And as you can see here, we also have an at sign. So this is gonna be another query parameter and we have limit equals 150. So hopefully you kind of understand what that's doing, but we'll get more into it later. So if we send this, the data that we're gonna get back, as you can see here, is in this format and this format is called uh, JSON. So it's like JavaScript something notation but um, it's kind of like a standardized uh, data format that we can use in all different kinds of languages. It's basically just like a structure of fetching data. So as you can see here, so this is status. So this is gonna give us information about that our API call worked. But if we close that, we have the actual data and this is an array. And as you can see, each one of these different objects in this array is gonna be a different cryptocurrency. So we'll go over this more when we do the uh, further into it. And I'll kind of show you how we structure data. But as you can see, like we have Ethereum, if we close this one, we have Tether, and it's just a bunch of different objects. But I'll show you this limit here that we have, we could literally put two. And then we'll only have um, Bitcoin and Ethereum. So as you can see, so query parameters are just ways of um, giving us options of how we want our data back, what we want from the API. So that's all I've got for you with this video. We're gonna continue on to, what's the second part? The second part is we're gonna make some mock data and we're gonna do the UI setup. So if you're excited um, to learn how to use APIs, please click like, please click subscribe if you want more Swift videos. I'm planning on coming out with quite a few things um, coming up. I'm gonna do push requests, um, both from like a Node.js server and also Firebase. That would be good to learn. And so subscribe if you want more of that. And thanks for watching, peace.